My ex fiance tried to get my wife to cheat on me. I think my ex fiance, just 31 female, might have tried to get my wife, Olivia, 30 female, drunk and cheat on me. My wife thinks I'm overreacting and overthinking the whole situation. Can someone please tell me if I would be an asshole to ask Olivia to stop being friends with Jess immediately? For context, Jess and I started dating during the sophomore year of our college. We met through mutual friends and connected instantly. She was charming and outgoing and made friends everywhere she went. I am more shy and nerdy, but I enjoyed going out to parties with her. We got engaged on our graduation day as both our families were attending. I got a job in a big tech company right after college and Jess moved in with me while looking for jobs. This is when the relationship started going downhill. Jess was an art major and had trouble finding a stable job. She did a bunch of freelance work and mostly worked from home. I was overwhelmed with work. She always wanted to go out to bars and clubs and I wanted to rest in the evening after 10 to 12 hours of work. I was okay with her going out with friends alone and I would sometimes tag along on the weekend. It bothered me that she was still in her party girl phase. She complained that I was becoming boring and should enjoy my early 20s before we settled down. I was also not happy with the friends she hung out with as there was a lot of drinking and drug use. Even when I went out with her friends, she would be extremely flirty with guys in her friends group. Her excuse was always that she gets flirty when she is drunk or she was just joking. I had enough and decided to call up the engagement after two years as we were just different people at that point. The breakup was messy and she kept trying to get back with me for almost a year. There were some incidences where Jess may not have acted in her best judgment and I blocked her from all my social media. I didn't want to deal with all the drama and wanted to move on. I also got a transfer to another town around the same time and never heard from Jess again. This is when I started dating my wife, Olivia. My wife was the exact opposite of Jess. She was very soft-spoken and a homebody like me. She knew I was engaged before. We dated for three years and happily married for two now. However, one of the sticking points we always had was my Thursday nights. Three of my closest college friends are now scattered all across the country and we generally play a video game together on Thursday evening since our college days. Olivia complained that she gets bored during that time. About six months ago, Olivia told me she got a Facebook invite for a group where they had painting and wine nights on Thursdays. It was mostly 8-10 to 10 women who got together at someone's house and spent the evening painting, drinking wine, and gossiping. According to Olivia, it was just a few housewives and divorcees and they welcomed her. One of the women's names was Jess, but I did not think much of it. Two weeks ago, Olivia told me it was Jess's birthday and they wanted a ladies night at a club. Olivia hates loud music, but just convinced her to come for dinner and some drinks. On that night, I got a call from Olivia at 10 p.m. asking me if I could come and pick her up. I could tell something was wrong and immediately left to get her. I went to the bar and went to pick up Olivia. I was shocked when I realized that her friend Jess was my ex fiance She also looked surprised to see me there. I was polite and said hello to everyone, but Olivia wanted to get out of there as soon as possible. After we went in the car, I told Olivia that Jess was my ex fiance whom I had not seen in almost seven years. Olivia was shocked to hear it and she didn't know about it. It was crazy because I didn't even know that she lived in the same city as us. Olivia told me Jess was the one who started the painting group. She had divorced her husband two years ago and moved to our city for a fresh start. The reason why she called me was because she was getting uncomfortable with the situation at the bar. Since Jess and one of the other women were single, they kept on encouraging guys hitting on them and inviting them over to their table. Jess was trying to get everyone drunk and was asking Olivia to open up and have fun. She was constantly hyping up Olivia to two of the guys who bought them a round of drinks. At this point, Olivia excused herself to go to the restroom and called me to pick her up. I am not happy with the situation, but I am also not mad at Olivia. I am just uncomfortable with Olivia hanging out with Jess. I told Olivia about the same. Olivia told me she was never going to put herself in the same situation again with Jess or anyone else. Also, this friend group is the only real social life she's had since we are both completely new to the city. She does not want to stop going to her painting nights with her friends. I brought up the thought that Jess could be acting in malice, but Olivia told me she did not think Jess would know I was her husband as Olivia never showed my picture to anyone in the friend group. She also said it had been 7 years since we broke up. Jess is a kind person and I should not judge her based on one night when she was drunk. She still wants to stay friends with Jess. On one hand, I don't want to separate Olivia from her friends, but my gut feeling is telling me something is off in the situation. Besides, it feels weird to have my ex be friends with my wife. Am I the asshole to want to stop Olivia from being friends with Jess because of my gut feeling? Or should I just let it go as it's Olivia's call to make? Okay, I used to be a dancer, and as a dancer, obviously I knew that most of our clients were going to be men with wives or girlfriends or something like that. And like, I was just an employee, okay? If I had ignored every man who had a wife or a girlfriend or something, I would have made two fucking cents. So one day this woman comes in and she's frantically scanning the fucking club. Immediately I know she's looking for her man. She absolutely is. And I immediately, I'm looking away. I'm looking every direction but her because I don't want to make eye contact. I don't want her to come up and talk to me. But this was a black woman looking for a black man. And I was one of the only black girls who worked there that night. So obviously she came to talk to me. She first walks up, hey girl, I'm, hey girl. She's asked me about the club. She's like, this is a strip club. And like, I'm sitting here in my tiny little outfit. I was like, 
yeah, yeah, it's a strip club, you know. So the conversation gets extremely dry and awkward, and I don't know what else to say. And so she hands me $20, and she goes, be honest, have you seen this man before? I was in shock. Listen, there is no stripper client confidentiality, okay? So I took a look at the photo, and I was like, you know what? He does look real similar to someone I saw in here earlier, but like, let me ask my homegirl for sure. Okay, so she confirms, and I tell the girl, I'm like, yeah, he was definitely here earlier, but like, I don't know where he is now. Like, he was here about an hour ago, haven't seen him since, you know? She asks if he could be in any of the private rooms, and like, at this specific club, you can look into all of the private rooms. So I was like, I mean, you're more than welcome to walk around the club and like, let us know if you see him. Like, I'm not stopping you at all. She looks around, doesn't see him, comes back. She's asking me if there's any other clubs in the area that like he might've gone to. I'm giving her directions to the nearest club over. And at that exact moment, the bathroom door opens. This man comes walking out of the bathroom, clueless as hell. So I look at the girl and I'm like, isn't that your man right there? She doesn't say anything. She doesn't say a fucking word. She hands my homegirl $20 and walks off immediately. And then this fucking moron doesn't even realize that she is walking right towards him doesn't even realize he walks directly up to the stage has himself a front row seat completely clueless still okay so at this point she walks over she sits down right next to him and immediately starts screaming in his fucking ear i don't even know what he's thinking at this point he hasn't even turned to look at her he is staring straight at the girl on stage not saying a fucking word and i mean what could he possibly say like i don't fucking know i don't fucking know he gets up still didn't say anything walks out the club she's following behind him screaming cussing his ass out the entire way out the fucking club and i don't ever know what happened after that so if that was you like please let me know what happened after you left the fucking club because i'm so incredibly nosy and i haven't stopped thinking about it i was in love with my best friend and she definitely was the one that got away so me and this girl go all the way back to kindergarten we're gonna name her ariana so me and ariana we became friends and eventually like we become best friends and for some reason somehow i don't know how because i was an ugly ass little kid but like we kind of became like the popular girls we were like the bitches running the shit you know what i mean <laughs> throughout fourth and sixth grade me and her were like the besties for the most part i say me and this girl were like completely inseparable i truly genuinely mean that like she was constantly over at my place i was constantly over at hers she knew my family i knew her family like everybody in my family liked her like we were really truly besties so sixth grade comes along and obviously like we're all getting ready to go into middle school but at this point me and ariana kind of have like a new friend i think it's because we had just been through so much together like we kind of like needed a fucking break from each other so i have my new bestie we're gonna name him robert and she has her new bestie we're gonna name her julia so me and this julia girl I never had any issues with her until I realized that she was really genuinely starting to take my fucking best friend from me and I was not feeling that. So obviously as one does, I start to develop some resentment for both of them and once seventh grade rolls around, me and Robert go to one middle school and then Julia and um, Ariana, they go to another one. And obviously at this point, they start getting super close and I'm just kind of like feeling left out. Sixth and seventh grade, that's kind of when you start to really like realize who the fuck you are and a lot of us me and ariana included we both came out as bisexual right and at this point i'm starting to realize like damn like maybe i have a crush on this bitch <laughs> i remember ariana had invited me over to her house and basically she had confessed to me that she had feelings for me and you know we had a little moment we had a little kiss or whatever and i was like damn like i've been waiting for that <laughs> she had made it very very clear to me that like she didn't want to fuck up our friendship and she didn't know if like she wanted to pursue something more or not but obviously i was fucking hopeful bitch eventually she does make up her mind and she does decide that she wants to keep our friendship and not pursue anything further and i respect her wishes even though it fucking made me so fucking sad this is why things start to get kind of interesting because not too long after this all happens she starts claiming julia as her new best friend honestly like i was understanding of it until ariana comes and tells me that she now has a crush on Julia and she's going to tell Julia who keep in mind is straight that she has a crush on her and bitch no words could describe how truly fucking flabbergasted I was and jealous and upset and irritated and just like what after she had told Julia about her feelings for her she comes and she tells me that Julia basically told her that she was kind of like grossed out by her and like wasn't really you know talking to her anymore and I'm like oh hmm 
you know eventually like they work it out and then they're getting really really close again and i'm just like sitting over here like damn bitch like i'm fucking pissed the fuck off <laughs> at this point honestly i'm just kind of fucking over it so i start to kind of distance myself and i think in the back of my mind i was looking for any excuse to just get the fuck away from this bitch because that's how mad i was so eventually she had posted something about like smoking the marijuanas and this was back when i was very anti-weed but i never really cut off any of my friends for it except for her because i was looking for a way out <laughs> we get into a huge ass fight about it and i decided that i'm gonna cut her off so i did and we didn't speak for like at least a year or so if i remember correctly i think that was the first like real heartbreak that i've ever actually had <laughs> which she still to this day doesn't know <laughs> eventually obviously we made up but since then it's just it's never been the same because obviously we went to different high schools we had different friends her and julia are still besties i guess <laughs> you know like now she's married with a child and she's in california living her fucking best life and i'm so freaking happy for her we actually spoke recently and just kind of like reminisced on the old times my 32 male ex-wife 33 female divorced me after a personality change i found out i have a brain tumor how do i move forward my ex-wife divorced me in 2022. I was devastated, but I couldn't blame her. We had been together for about six years, and for a while, we had an incredible relationship. We had a memorable engagement in Belize, a long story involving bats, getting stranded at the Mayan ruins where I proposed to her, and being rescued by a passing British military exercise. But that's a whole other story. I won't wax poetic about it, but suffice to say, it's the happiest I've ever been. And I think I made her very happy too. Too. She was my best friend, and we were ready to spend the rest of our lives together. I was extremely close to her whole family as well. I was her brother's best man at his wedding. But then the trouble started. My mental health took a steep decline. My behavior was extremely erratic and bizarre. When we were in public, I often thought I was being followed. One time, I became convinced listening devices had been implanted in our home. I thought the police or government agencies were after me and monitoring my devices. My wife finally dragged me to the emergency room after one of these incidents, and I ended up getting diagnosed as having a psychotic break with bipolar and schizoaffective disorder. My wife stood by me through it all, but even on treatment, I continued my strange behavior and thought patterns. There was lying and substance abuse. Previously, I'd only ever drank socially and occasionally smoked weed. It was all very out of character for me. I'd always been a very stable person, but I seemed to be spiraling. One day, my wife had had enough and told me she wanted a divorce. She'd caught me lying about drug use. For a while, I maintained contact with her brother, who tried to support us both through it, but eventually he cut me off too. In the year following the divorce, I tried emailing and texting my wife and her brother, but eventually I got the hint. Mutual friends dropped me too. I couldn't blame anybody. I think additional lies and misbehaviors had come to light, so I was a pariah. I sank pretty low, lost multiple jobs, and barely scraped by. Fast forward to now, I'm still struggling, but I've managed to hold a good, well-paying job and even bought a few properties. I got a new little pup named Archie who keeps me going when times get tough. I've kept at therapy and it's definitely helped. But recently, while traveling, I suddenly collapsed. I went to the hospital and when the doctor heard my history, he immediately ordered an MRI. The look on his face and his whole demeanor spooked me, like he suspected something that he didn't want to tell me. But he insisted on just waiting to see and not speculating. Lo and behold, I have a brain tumor. The funny thing is, when I found out, I was dot 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 relieved. Finally, it all made sense. Apparently, it's not unheard of for such a thing to be misdiagnosed as bipolar. The doctors say it's probably been growing slowly for a long time, and it explains my strange and out-of-character behavior. Thankfully, they think it's treatable, and with surgery, I stand to make a good recovery. So how do I move forward with this? I want to try to reach out to my ex-wife and her brother, but maybe they've moved on with their lives, and I shouldn't try to reinsert myself. I've done enough damage as it is. They don't seem to want to have any contact with me but I also feel like they should know. They may have blocked my number and email, but I do still have some mutual friends I could reach out through. For all I know, my wife is in another relationship and I shouldn't reopen those wounds. But if the roles were reversed, I'd want her to know. So how should I move forward here? What, if anything, should I say? This update came April 8th. Long story short, 
I've decided not to contact my ex or her brother for the time being. I know some people were probably rooting for a happier or at least more interesting ending, but this is how I'm handling things for now. He goes on to say, I think the majority of the comments on my last post encouraged me to reach out just to inform my ex of the situation and maybe give her some closure. Some suggested making a post on social media so it would get back to her or delivering a message through a mutual friend. For a while, something along these lines is what I wanted to do. Now for the social media thing, I don't actually have any social media other than an Instagram account for my pup Archie, with like 10 followers, and a Facebook account using a fake name with zero friends. I use it for Marketplace. But that's kind of besides the point. I think more importantly, not reaching out right now just dot 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 feels like the right move. I guess the true question is, what would be the best way to handle this for my ex? How does this affect her? And honestly, the more I think about it, the more it seems like reaching out is the selfish move. She's always been a strong, resilient person, so I have no doubt she's managed to build a good life and move on, and I'd just be potentially interfering with that, stirring up old hurt and wounds and maybe adding a lot of confusion and other complicated emotions. And then, for the selfish perspective, I don't think it would be good for me either. I admit, a part of me fantasized about a situation where we got back together, all was forgiven, and we lived happily ever after. But I think that's exactly the problem. I realized there was no way I was going to be able to temper my expectations. So right now, with everything going on, it probably would be a bad thing to add it into the mix. I've always loved my ex-wife. We grew up together. I loved all of her quirks and her silliness and her strength, the way she always stood up for what she believed in. The fact that we always had so much fun together, whether we were playing a board game, she'd learn quick and kick my ass, except for Race for the Galaxy, or buying a house, or going on a bike ride somewhere, or overanalyzing a movie or TV show we'd watch together. She's brilliant and hilarious and gorgeous and a total weirdo. Very early in our relationship, she asked whether I was a barfer or a shitter when I got <laughs> sick. I was also the DM for a D&D campaign that she played in, and her goblin rogue would always peak tabletop gaming to me. I loved hearing her thoughts about everything. I miss her every day. And who knows? Maybe we'll reconnect at some point in the future. I'm not ruling out ever contacting her. And in case it wasn't clear in my last post, I never thought my tumor exonerated me of responsibility for everything I've done. I know I still need to take ownership of my actions and learn to grow from this. So that's what I'm going to focus on, getting better. My surgery is getting scheduled and then I'll just have to take it one step at a time. There's a lot of other stuff going on too. I was applying and interviewing for jobs before all of this and actually got two offers recently. So I'll be communicating with them about whether we could delay the start date and worst case, if not, my current job is secure and medical leave won't be a problem. I also bought another property, although the sale is still conditional, so I could walk away if I have to. We'll see how it goes. All this to say, life is pretty hectic right now, but I honestly feel good. And for the first time in several years, I'm looking forward to what comes next, whatever that may be. Anyways, thanks again, everyone, for reading and commenting, sharing your advice and stories, well wishes and love. I might post another update down the line, but fair warning, I'm hoping it's just as boring as this one. These are things that are not normal to put up with in a relationship, and I'm certified and qualified, so I know what the fuck I'm talking about. If your man has ever blocked you, that shit is not fucking normal, and what the fuck is he hiding? No matter how long, for hours, for days, for minutes, bitch, why the fuck is he blocking you, period, in general? Like... When you guys are fighting, it is not normal for him to give you the silent treatment. Like, yes, taking a minute out to, like, cool down, to not get as mad, to not overreact, but to full-on literally ignore you when you're trying to talk to them, not normal. If he says stuff like, oh, we already talked about this, oh, you love to start fights, and you're literally just bringing up how you feel and what bothered you, he is trying to silence you, and that's why he says all of that shit. Like, bitch, just fix the problem, period. Like, you shouldn't have to feel like you can't bring up certain things because he's gonna get mad. Like, girl, what the fuck? Like, are you dealing with a child? Man having a Snapchat streak with a girl, let alone having Snapchat. Like, what the fuck is a grown man over 21 having a Snapchat for? Like, what the fuck? Like, we literally stopped using Snapchat in middle school. Why the fuck is your man still using Snapchat? If you glow down since being with him, I feel like that is a universal sign that you are with the wrong person, okay? Or if you always constantly feel drained or exhausted, babes, it's the universe telling you you're with the wrong man. Just trust me, there are people that suck the energy out of you. Like, your man should give you more energy, not drain it. If you deep down feel threatened by other women that he's with or that he's always around or he's friends with and he's not cutting them off, that is not normal. Or if there's just like a girl that's always a topic of discussion, like you feel like she's way too close to your man and he is not setting boundaries with her, 
that is not normal only women in the relationship should literally be you you're his best friend you're his everything you're his other half okay if he never compliments you when you get dressed up and you try your biggest and shit like that is he gay what the fuck when he starts using your secrets against you like he brings it up during fights to make you look like the bad person like bitch you're fake as hell okay you tell him some shit like oh like your mom kicked you out the house right he brings it up in a fight like oh that's why your mom kicked you out your house because you're a bitch like what do you want to get beat up since we're on that topic if he calls you a bitch or anything out your name that man is a fucking lame okay drop that man right now if he has never not once ever bought you flowers like does he really like you or is he just a lame ass person because if a guy ever says like oh they're just gonna die anyways and my love for you is gonna die <laughs> anyways their plants they're gonna die it's the fact that like you are going out your way to like give someone something that's beautiful like in general you know what i mean but he hangs out with his friends more than you because like what the fuck does he like his friends is he do you but especially if he's always ditching you to hang out with his friends what the fuck that shit is so disrespectful i have the record of most attentions and referrals given at once at my old middle school. So this story dates back to 2020. I'm not currently in middle school. And it's also the reason I don't have a dad right now. So this was the very beginning of 2020. I had just gotten a new phone. I got the new iPhone 11. So I gave my old phone back to my dad so that he could sell it or do whatever he needed to do with it. So I had no idea, but my dad started looking through my old phone and like watching the stuff I watched on YouTube back to see if it had like had a curse word or something. Like it was a really strict household. So I kind of couldn't really do anything without getting in trouble. On my phone, I had text messages. It was like a math group chat with all my friends in my math class and we would send the homework answers to each other to like check our answers or just like have the homework, which our teacher allowed. So this was not something I thought I had to be hiding. So my dad found that and he called the school and told them that I was taking pictures of my math test during the test, giving the answers to people. I don't know how one can exaggerate so much, but that was the day I learned he could. And then he found on my phone that I had photoshopped someone's report card for them only to print it out so she could show her parents, which like, I guess is like lying or something. I don't know. But it's not like I hacked the entire school system and changed her grades. Like on that note, my dad called them and told them I had the system. Like the next thing is I had snuck out of my homeroom class, which my teacher didn't really care what we did. So I didn't really think it was about a big deal because like she didn't really care. My dad told them I stuck out of all my classes, which <laughs> way different. Like, no, I did not sneak out of a real class. Plus all my attendance was there. So it's like, how can you even prove it, you know? And the last thing I remember him finding is that I had snuck out of ACEs, which if you don't know what ACEs is, it's like students that have to come to school early because their parents have work or like students have to stay after school late because their parents have work. So when I was at the morning ACEs, me and a group of my friends all walked to this one girl's house who was also in ACEs because her house was super close and there was like a grocery store really close. So we just like go and get snacks and we did this like twice or three times but yeah he found out about one of those times and told the school that i just ditched school completely like how are you gonna say that when my attendance is there like school didn't even technically start yet so did i really do anything that bad then when i got to school the next day i was pulled into the office and i didn't know he had called well and then they told me that he was the one that called and i was like girl what they pulled me in and they told me that i had gotten 11 detentions and four referrals and four referrals adds up to a suspension at my middle school but since i had got them all at once they like cut me some slack and also because i had like perfect grades i was like a really 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 good student they were kind of skeptical themselves of what my dad was saying which i was kind of shocked but like they were real ones for that the guy told me he was like you know i don't want to give you any of these attentions because you're such a good student but like your dad is making us like literally bar for bar like that's what he said and i was like oh so <laughs> my dad really hates me so i explained to them the truth of all of it and they believed me because I don't, I don't know why they believed me so much. Like, my dad must have sounded like a fat liar when he was on the phone, which makes sense because 
it was for the sending homework one they were like is your teacher okay with that and i was like yeah he is he said it was fine like he literally was like yeah that's fine which is kind of shocking because i feel like most teachers would not be okay with that but like he was so that reduced my sentence to nine detentions but then they kind of just stopped giving me the detention so i only did two and then they didn't give me any more like detention slips because they thought i was such a good student and didn't deserve them so when i came home normal time my dad was like why are you not at detention and i was like well they didn't give me one and he was like okay and so he calls them and makes them give me more detentions again telling this bag is so sad bro like it's just sad they were honestly like not upset at me at all they were like by the way like you know you got the record now and i was like you think i want to be hearing that I mean, I did kind of want to hear it because now I can tell this story. Now, the best part is that after I had served like two detentions and he called them to make them give me more, it was March 13th, 2020. And if you know what that means, no more school. I was blessed. Um, I was saved by God. Like, I was saved, bro. I was in seventh grade by that time, so I didn't go back to real school until high school. And those detentions did not carry over. And since it was middle school, nothing's on my record. So nice try, father, but you did not succeed. There are some of the most feminine things men have done to me. Trend of I'm in my feminine era, but so is he. And like these men being little bitches is all over my For You page. So I was like, let me just tell you some of the things that I've been through with these feminine ass men. And don't you worry, I have my own take on the trend coming up. You'll see the screenshots in a minute. This first one is ingrained in my memory and just really had me questioning myself as a woman. This man told me, didn't ask me, told me that I should be the one ordering us Uber Eats because I make more money. This one set me over the edge because what the actual fuck do I look like? Like actually 5150 me if I ever buy a man Uber Eats because he suggested that I do it because I make more money and this man's not even my boyfriend. I don't even like this man. I literally think I said to this man in that moment, like, oh my God, like you're in your feminine energy. Like you want me to spend a bag on you? Get the fuck out of my face. Get the fuck out of my face. This man is the same man that told me I should be cooking for him. I literally looked at him and I was like, when the fuck did I become Martha Stewart to you? Like, when the fuck did you think it was okay to tell a bitch who we're not even dating? We were just fucking. You know what? Barely at that. We were barely fucking because it wasn't good. How are you going to look me in the eye and tell me I should be cooking for you when you can't even make me come? Don't get me wrong. I will cook all day for a man that is my boyfriend. I will throw it down in the fucking kitchen. Not a man who I really didn't even fuck with. But the audacity for that little princess to say that to me, I like lost my mind. I was like, you need to get the fuck out of my face. Like, we will never be anything more than enemies at this point. This is one of my favorites. We were laid up in bed and this man asked me for influencer tips. But I'm sorry, picture this. We're laid up in a bed with a man that you really like. You really like this fucker and he looks you dead in the eyes and is like, what hashtags do you use on your TikTok? I was like, what the actual fuck? And I told him, I was like, no, I don't mix business and pleasure like if you want to be an influencer like go do your thing but like i just like i'm not gonna mix that i'm not mixing that he's like oh my god i would never want to be an influencer i would like actually fucking hate that why are you asking me for hashtags why are you asking me what hashtags works best and what time of day you should be posting get the fuck out of my face guess who is now actively in an inspiring influencer him my first relationship if i ever wanted to go on a date or like go to dinner or anything i had to pay oh and i did and i did i was 16 and i was that man's boyfriend i literally was his boyfriend i took care of everything Thing. Baby, give me the bills. I'm gonna take care of them. Um, I hate it here. Just recently, actually, called me a bitch, told me to fuck off, and then made fun of my job. Listen, the only people that can call me a bitch in this lifetime are my fucking sisters, and they can barely do that. When I read bitch on the screen, I was like, hold on like somebody hold my hoops like does this bitch want to fight me like does this man want to fight me like bitch is fighting words bitch is fighting words those are just the men and their feminine energy that i have unfortunately dealt with in the past i must have been on fucking drugs because it low-key is really embarrassing am i the astronaut for allowing my ex-wife into my home Early yesterday evening, my ex-wife came to pick up our son from home. At the time, my wife and I had a few visitors over for dinner. The visitors included her sister and husband, but were mostly friends. Usually, my ex phones our son when she's downstairs. We live in an apartment building, and he goes down to meet her. Yesterday, she called our son as usual, but asked him to ask me if she could come up because one of her younger kids needed to use the bathroom. I obviously said yes. She came up with her three younger kids. She didn't know we had company so apologize for interrupting before taking the kids to our bathroom. On her way out, a couple of the guests stopped her for a quick chat. 
friends I've had since she and I were married, but it was only for a few minutes. My son gave his little siblings some of the snacks that were out for the guests. After they left, my wife's sister was quick to call my ex rude for barging in. One of the friends replied to her, saying something about small kids' bladders, and nothing more was said about it. However, after everyone but my wife's sister had left, my wife and her sister started talking about it and both agreed that it was rude and tacky. They couldn't believe she started talking to some of our friends. When I objected, they said it was wrong of me to have let her in without asking my wife first. I said, that's ridiculous. Later, my wife and I discussed it again, and she said she found it embarrassing for me to just let her in like that. I asked why, but she said I wouldn't understand. Am I really the asshole here? I was trying to do a normal, nice thing, but now I feel bad about upsetting my wife. <laughs> 